Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. Massive matchups in the VCT coming up today, especially Sentinels versus Hunter of Thieves, the big elimination match in the very first losers bracket round of the group of death. But also last night, big rumours emerging as to what's going on in NRG. A scrim was leaked on tracker.gg by a Demon One's profile with a very interesting composition, especially on the split, but also getting absolutely slammed by M80. What does this mean as NRG prepared to face Cloud9? Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I greatly appreciate it. The less said about these pictures, probably the better. But we've got to talk about the Pacific as well, because DRX took down Detonation Gaming as well yesterday. No real massive surprises here, a pretty comfortable 2-0. Flashback as well. Okay, in terms of rating here on VLR, which doesn't always tell the whole picture, but to be fair, top frag to the server as well. He was talking quite a big game going into this year that he reckons that, you know, he can be a really important player to take DRX to the next level. So, of course, they've made a couple of relatively controversial roster changes right of course rb and zest being removed foxy nine is now in flashback is now in as well and yeah he's definitely a player to watch i think for these guys Game 2 was 13-8. So both maps 13-8. It wasn't complete domination, but it was reasonably comfortable. And DFM will, of course, drop down to the loser's bracket in their group. The other series, though, that was going on here was PaperX versus Gen G. And I think if you're a Gen G fan, you've got to be, to some degree, satisfied. You never want to lose. But the way they played here against PaperX, I thought was very impressive. This is like classic PaperX pay for you as well. Look at this double peek through the smoke. I mean, just sensational work for PaperX. We know how they play the game, and they had some wild, not exactly compositions, we'll see some of their ideas in a second, but they just use anything and everything. Basically, all of their players had a different agent every single map of this series, and it was eventually a 2-1 to Paper X, and this was not like a dominant 2-1 on the maps that they won. Map 1 Breeze was 13-10 to Gen G. Texture, again, we talked about him yesterday, but he looks like a really solid player here for these guys. So um, they won the 13-10 map 1. Then it was 13-10 the other way on Paper X's pick here on the Lotus. And then the sunset was, to be fair, 13-7. So a bit more comfortable there towards the end and something really turned up on the final map. And yeah, it was a pretty dominant defensive side. But still, Gen G, I think they've got to take some positives away from this series. Yes, the final map, Meteor and Munchkin kind of got crunched into oblivion. But Paper X are Paper X. And I think they'll take some positives from this one. But of course, this also means that Paper X become the first team to qualify for the playoffs internationally by getting the number one seed out of group C as of course they were the number one seed going in they got through as the number one seed so they now qualify through with the, the maximum possible advantage right I'm pretty sure they will play the winner of the play-in which will be one of the teams from the loser side so they're in a very good position they've only got to win one more series paper x now to qualify themselves through to Masters Madrid and Genji RRQ rematch which of course was 2-1 the first time that's going down in a couple of days time to determine the second qualifier but as things down we now already have the losers bracket games getting underway bleed versus global esports is currently ongoing and it's not looking good for bleed esports right 39 game one of the sunset and the icebox is currently eight to four so i mean i didn't think the g looked particularly good the other day but this could be bleed esports all the optimism and the hype around this team getting eliminated straight away again yay on the viper game one I don't really know what they're cooking right now, but they've got to cook something quick if they want to make a comeback in this series. This is their pick as well on Icebox here. And, you know, I thought maybe we might see Ye on someone like the Chamber. He's on the Jets here. And by the time this video goes live, you guys will probably know the conclusion to this Ye 3 and 10 so far on that defensive side, which is... Not what we are used to seeing from Ye on a defensive side of Icebox. That is absolutely for sure. So yeah, Paper X make it through. Lots of discussion on the Pacific in general, who the second team there is going to be. On paper, you think probably, you know, Paper X, DRX, but also T1, Talon have even looked good as well. So lots of interesting things happening in that region right now. We've got to talk as well about NRG and what's happening with them. They had an impressive victory to start off their campaign in Group A, but the Cloud9 series will arguably be more of a test. I mean, Fury have played well, but, um, you know, Cloud9 have got Oxy and they've got other top talents. I would say that they should still be favoured. And NRG have always kind of been known as a team that doesn't necessarily dominate things in practice, but we are seeing evidence of that right about here. So the remarkable thing 
thing about this is, and this isn't good for NRG that this is leaked, but you know, it's not my fault. It's publicly available here on the website tracker.gg because for some reason Demon1's account that he was playing on here is just tracking all of their scrims. So here we go. It's a scrim against M80. They're playing here on the split. And um, this one was actually 13-12 here. So they played the 24 rounds and then I guess they played a bit of an overtime. But I have a look at this split composition, right? And this is where are the teams will be looking at this thing. And okay, is that what they're cooking up? Because in practice, this is where you practice how things are going. So we've got Victor on the Neon, which maybe isn't completely outrageous, but it's something that isn't, you know, pulled out that often. But Demon 1 on the Omen. This is where things get strange. Ethan, of course, on the Chaos, as you'd expect. Marv on the Breach, and then Crashy's on, you know, on the Cypher. Interesting composition for sure, especially the way that they've put this one together with Demon 1 and the Omen, right? No Rays, no Viper, nothing like that that M80 are bringing to the table on a slightly more, you know, traditional composition. But that's how they got things going. And to be fair, they won this one 13-12. So that's one of these compositions that teams will be looking at because if you play NRG in your Cloud9, you'll see this going around today and you'll think, well, okay, that would be interesting to note if we were to play them on split. This though was the Breeze where they play something slightly more traditional. Demon one here on the jet had six frags and they got beat 21 to 3 here. They got crushed on there. I mean, like, just M80 just destroyed them on the attacking side. Koala Noob completely jet diffed Demon 1 here, which is, you know, I don't know what's going on in their heads because we talk about scrim bucks sometimes, but it's like, oh, come on, it's like 8 to 3 or something. When it's 21 to 3, because they play all the 24 rounds here when they scrim, they don't just stop it at 12 or 13, of course. When you're getting crushed like this in a scrim, you've got to think that either, like, they were just, you know, losing full or they were just something must have been going wrong because they can't have been playing get their full 100% potential if this is happening. Unless they were just, you know, working on things, trying things. And I don't really think that these scrim results should necessarily mean that much in terms of what we should expect from NRG. But nonetheless, getting smoked 21-3 on the breeze is pretty interesting. But it's not a new thing really for NRG to be not struggling in practice. I mean, I would say this is struggling in practice here on this map. But, you know, they got 21-3 tier on the breeze, but yet they won it reasonably comfortably against Fury when they played it just the other day. So I definitely think NRG a team that plays better when it comes to a real match situation. But of course, they play Cloud9 very shortly. We'll discuss that here in just a couple of seconds. G2 though as well. They played their first series of the tournament last night. They brought a new assistant coach on as well to help them out. So they're definitely taking things seriously. But crew have done a classic crew. And look, I'm kind of confident now in my prediction. Maybe I shouldn't be, but I predicted that Crew and G2 would be the two teams to make it out of this group, not Evil Geniuses. We'll see if that's true. But based on what we saw in this one, I think that both of these teams are definitely capable of getting through. But um, Crew, again, it's the classic thing. When they did this so many times last season, they look good, they have great chances, and then they just bottle it, you know? They won the game one here on the icebox. Eventually, game two went the way of G2, but this is a pretty competitive affair here as well. And then game three, they had a fair few chances here on the ascent, but um, in the NG2 were just a little bit too strong. And, you know, it's just such a classic crew series, really. Jonah P as well bailed these boys out hard many a time. And I know there's still questions on exactly what's going on with Trent and also with Leaf, because, I mean, this series, Trent played the Viper and was not on the sofa at all, which is not what you might typically expect. And, you know, there's still questions about whether Leaf can, you know, be the player they need him to be, because, of course, Tex having gone. On. Leaf was coming in as their replacement. Interesting changes, but yeah, in the end, Icebox 13-9 to Crew, then it was 13-9 the other way, and then Ascent was 13-11. So close for Crew, but of course, not close enough. And they go down to the loser's bracket in another classic series from those guys, but um, the talent is still definitely there. So they will go on to play the loser of G2 Evil Geniuses, which comes up now in a few days' time. So there's a bit of a break here, but today, of course, is a big day. So it's the 19th. We have Fury at MIBR, first of all. The first elimination tournament of the season for the America side. I've got Furia getting the job done here, to be fair, and then we have Sentinels 100 Thieves. This is the one that everyone is really looking forward to. It's going to be pretty late my time, but yeah, what a banger right on paper. These two organizations going head-to-head, -head, both teams that dropped down to losers, of course, losing to Loud and Leviathan, respectively. 100T looked pretty good against uh, Lev, but I think that Sentinels should be the stronger team on paper. They are the favorites, theoretically, and um, I'm still thinking that Sentinels can come through this group and qualify, but it's going to be a mammoth task, I think, to do so with Loud and Lev now having that advantage that they enjoy coming in from the winner's side. Of course, G2 as well, and Valen was happy with the victory that they managed to achieve. And just before we close out here, I wanted to mention an interesting interview that was actually done with Zelsis on the situation, because 
you know, Zeltis knows the situation that he's in. He knows that, of course, lots of fans behind you when you're a Sentinels player. But also, if things go wrong, then things can get a little bit toxic, right? So this was an interview that was done. I'll leave a link for you guys down below. When um, Zeltis actually comments on the Sentinels fan base and was asked the question, was Sentinels always where you wanted to be? And he goes on to say, like, after we lost playoffs for Cloud9, I think early on we knew that we weren't going to be staying together and says that Sentinels was the number one priority. Has always been a world-class organization. They want to win. I'm late in my career, he says, or I want to win as well. Really, really badly right now. So it kind of made sense. But of course, he was going to be a bench player for the initial situation. But he goes on to say the following, the fan base for Sentinels is very loving, but also very toxic. They just want the best for the organization, the players, they're diehard fans like sports fans, where they want the best for their team. They want the best for the players, so they're ruthless. I don't really care about it that much. So, you know, I think as a player, especially playing for an organization like Sentinels, you've got to have some pretty thick skin. When things are going well, you're getting all the love in the world. When they're not, you know, you're getting roasted. And I think this shouldn't really be a massive surprise, right, him saying this, because it's a thing for every organization. And he probably didn't mean it quite like this, because... The fan base is not simultaneously loving and toxic. It's like you've got certain individuals in the fan base that are toxic and certain individuals that are, you know, not toxic, I guess, as it were. But the more fans you have of a team, the more, you know, the higher numbers of, like, toxic fans, as it were, you're going to get. But as he says, like, he recognises that it's sports at the end of the day. So this is the type of thing you expect. But if you lose and you get roasted, you've got to expect it. So tonight, if they lose, they're definitely getting roasted, but I don't think that they will. But very much interested in your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.